Hello again. In a previous video, I went through some of the basics of object-oriented programming in Java. This was the project at the end of that video. While it doesn't matter if you've seen that video before, I'm going to continue on with the task that I proposed to viewers of that video at the end. And this was the task. Create a point class and a point tester class. Point represents a point in 2D space, which means it has an X and a Y value. This should be represented as fields in the class. A string representation of a point object should show the X and Y values as a Cartesian coordinate pair with a parentheses and comma. Then I said, let's talk a little bit about composition and create a circle class that has a point and has a double. So the point is the center of the circle and the double is the radius of that circle. I briefly talked about composition versus inheritance and now I want to go through and code up this composition example. At the end, I also want to show you how to declare an array of references and how to initialize those references to objects. And we'll do this using our point tester and our point class. So you can be in a new IntelliJ project or just working from the command line. That's fine. I'm going to continue working in OOP fun. So if you see in my source folder, I already have two classes. I'm not going to work with either of these classes other than just showing you the task that I proposed at the end of my last video. And the solution to this task is going to be in some new classes. All right, so I'm going to make a new Java class called point. And point is going to have two fields, private and x and private and y. I could make these double. It doesn't really matter. And then as far as my constructors go, I should have a default value constructor and an explicit value constructor. So let's do the DVC first. I'm just going to initialize my default points to the origin. Seems pretty simple and seems to make sense. Now the rest of this class I could type out. I did that in the last video when I derived the book class. But I'm going to just use a keyboard shortcut to bring up the generate code menu. And I'm going to let IntelliJ essentially generate the rest of this code for me. So this is command N on Windows or alt insert on, uh, excuse me, command N on Mac and alt insert on Windows or on Linux. So I'm going to generate a constructor that's going to be an explicit value constructor containing arguments for both X and Y, hence the parameters into X and Y. I'll label this as EVC explicit value constructor. All right, next, I should have some getters and setters for X and Y. Great. And lastly, let's go ahead and do control O to bring up our override methods list. And let's override to string that we inherit from object. And let's return a string representing a Cartesian coordinate pair using parentheses and a comma. All right, that's a really minimal working example for point. Time to test out point. New Java class, point tester. All right, so point tester needs a main. And it's going to create a point, let's say origin, using our default value constructor. And we'll make one more point. I'll just call it uh, P1 using our explicit value constructor. Say it's at 3, negative 8, I don't know, 89, sure. So I'll print origin and I'll print out P1. And Here's two string being implicitly invoked for each of my points when a string representation of them is needed 
to print out using system.out.printline. So this looks great. Very minimal working example of a point class. Next one I want to show is an example of an array of references. So let's say I want to have an array of five points. So my type for my new object reference is going to be point array, and I'll just call it points. Invoke the array constructor with the keyword new, and I'll put in five for the number of points. So now a little quiz here. How many point objects were just made? The answer to this is actually zero because five point references were made. They're all null. Zero point objects were made. We actually have to go through using a for loop or some sort of loop and create each one of these point objects and set the references in this array to point to these objects. So the reference at point sub i is going to refer to a new point object. And I don't really care what I initialize it to. And this is where we're actually making a point object. Not here, we're making point references, which are initially null. Here, we're actually making the point object. So now I'll real, print, real quickly print out this array with arrays dot to string. We'll note that you will need to import java.util dot arrays in order to use the to string static method of the arrays class. So here's my array being printed. Note that implicitly for each one of my objects, each one of my elements, we're getting the two string from point called and returning this nice Cartesian coordinate pair string we're seeing here. All right, one thing to note, I kind of glossed over it when I said this two string here is static. So typically when you see something like um, identifier dot identifier open print close print, you think, okay, this is an instance level method because I need an object in order to invoke it. Well. That's true, except here, I want to be very clear, arrays is not an object. Okay, if I hover over it, I'll see this is a class. Okay, why is this important? Because convention really helps you read code. Convention in Java is that all types start with a capital letter. So because arrays here starts with a capital letter, I already know that toString is going to be a static method, a class level method, because we're using the name of a class to invoke it, not the name of an object reference. Whereas up here, for example, I'm using points dot length, points lowercase p, by convention, I follow camel case for my identifiers, which lets me know this is an object reference, and I'm going to access a member at the instance level, okay? So this is a non-static instance level member, See, even here, public final int length, there's no static in here. There's one length field for each array object. Whereas here, there's only one two string method that is shared amongst all instances of arrays, if there are any. Uh, so we just access it using the class name, not an object. Hopefully that helps clear up a little bit about static versus non-static. Just to summarize, one more time. Static means no this context because it's class level. So shared amongst all objects of the class. Non-static means there is a this reference. So this is instance level. Need an object to invoke or access. So arrays is a class, we don't have an object reference, so two string is static. Points is an object reference, so this is going to be non-static as we access a member 
that is specific to points object. All right, so we're done with the first half of the task. The second half of the task here says to create a circle class and a circle tester class and use composition. So circle is going to have its own point field and its own double radius field. All right, so another new class. So here's that composition in action. So circle is composed of a, another class, namely the point class. Note that this isn't necessarily called composition because double isn't a class, it's a primitive. I'm going to just initialize my radius to 1.0, the unit circle. And I'll initialize center to just be a new default point. So this is essentially the origin. Okay, so I'm gonna be a little lazy here and let IntelliJ write my EBC. Okay, so in this case, we're expecting the calling code to pass in a double and a point. If we didn't wanna require our calling code to create a point to pass in, we might provide one more explicit value constructor, kind of a convenience initializer, where they can pass in uh, a double and two ints, one for X and one for Y. And then here, we're going to make the point object ourselves. All right, getter and setter, great. And let's do two string as well. And I'll just leave this uh, default output here. I don't really care too much about what my circle two string looks like. What's most important here is focusing on how to use composition in object-oriented programming. So this here is just a nice convenience initializer that prevents the calling code from actually making the object that we're going to use uh, as composition to compose the circle class. One more class, circle tester. All right, so let's make circle C1 gets new circle. We'll just do our DVC. Two. Let's do our first EVC. So here we need to pass in a radius, say 5.5, and a new point. Let's say it's at 1, 1. And this is our, let's call it our convenience EVC. And this is more of our standard EVC. So here, I'm not required to actually make a point object. I can just pass in, sure, I'll make it a big one. I can just pass in uh, two integers for x and y, and then my constructor for circle is going to invoke the constructor for point. All right, so here's output from my circle class two string. What's kind of cool about this is here's our output from circle class two string for C1. And if you look, what's being assigned here is the output from our two string for the point class, which is pretty neat. So that's all being called implicitly. Nowhere in the code did I actually call two string explicitly. It's all happening implicitly. All right, so that wraps up a little task that I wanted to work through to show another example of OOP to show that uh, we can make an array of object references. We just have to remember 
we have to make the objects that those objects refer to. And also seeing a little example here of composition, right? So circle has a point. And both circle and point are programmer-defined classes that we define. All right, that's the end of this video. Thank you again for watching. Hopefully you're feeling more comfortable with some of the basics of object-oriented programming in Java.